Hey, I'm the cat toy lady. Today, I'm making another cat wheel. I'm going to make it out of a different material before I've used the items from the Dollar Tree and I've also used foam board. Today, I'm actually going to be using this bad boy behind me. It's corrugated plastic. So basically, it's like cardboard, but made out of plastic. And it's a big four by eight sheet. And then, as you can tell here, I have a few things that I'm going to be working with. Um, I don't know if I'm going to end up needing more. Of course, I'm always winging this. Um, I do have four solid casters, not the swivel type. And these guys run about $4 a piece. They're the two inch size. Then I have just some clips to help keep things in place, painter's tape and clear tape. And then the key to making everything work together. This, you probably can't tell exactly what it is called carpet tape. It's like a giant super strength double stick tape. I was experimenting with different ways to be able to glue this together. Plastic doesn't allow for air drying in between and hot glue either melts it or peels straight off anyways. Um, so hot glue does not work. So this super strength double stick tape seems to really really work. And with the way I'm going to be putting this together, I have a good feeling about it. I do also have my floppy tape measure and a push pin. That's going to help me draw the circles. If you've seen my previous videos on cat wheels that I've made, this is just kind of learning from what worked and what didn't work, trying to make things a little bit easier, th make things a little bit more stable. And for the love of God, yes, I will make sure at the end of this video, you will see cats using it and see how it works. In the past, I did not have luck with letting somebody else take the wheel and hoping I would get a video back from them. It didn't quite work, but this time I'm going to be using my own cats and also as I'm making this, you'll notice it's not going to be very fancy, it's not going to be very pretty because it's going to be made for shelter purposes. I want them to be able to wash it down, spray it with whatever they want and it still work. You can't do that when there's fabric or when it's made out of something like foam board or it has a coating on it that's made out of paper or vinyl. The vinyl starts to peel off with different cleaners. It's going to be very clean and simple but easy to sanitize. And I do have two sheets. It is again a four by eight piece of corrugated plastic and they're $21 a piece at my home improvement store. Let's see if I can do this. And just to let you know a little trick I'm doing as I'm getting started, I'm using an Expo, you know, like a dry erase marker to be able to make my marks on here. And that way when it's done, I can just wipe it all off. So I want the inside diameter of this wheel to be four feet. And this bad boy is four feet wide. So that's not going to work to be able to make a full circle all at once. To be able to piece it together, that way I can overlap since I'm going to do two layers thick. And by having those two layers thick on each band that's going to go around the outside, it's going to really help with that rigidity and to give it some weight to be able to help everything stay in place. So I have given myself a guide going all the way down the middle just so I kind of know where everything is. I have short arms. I can't be reaching all the way across. So it's just a little helper. So now I'm going to be using my floppy tape measure to be able to find a 48 inch diameter circle and a 50 and a half inch circle. I'm going to make the band going all the way around two and a half inches. So I need to make two arcs from the exact same central spot. And because I don't want to be putting push pins all into this board, I just have a little cheap piece that I've made that I can put my push pin in to be able to anchor and it sticks in place. And that way I can slide it down the board as I need to to get the arcs I want. And I am going to be going down the long edge as I'm doing this. So I'm going to make the arcs go side to side here and not all the way around. I'm just going to go back and forth. So the trick that helps me is I take my floppy tape measure and I fold it over at the one. And I, so I always add over an extra inch on whatever I'm doing. That way I can put my push pin or my pencil or my marker through at that point. Then I take that folded over edge and I line it up with where I need to go and then pull it so I can find the halfway point. And I take my push pin and I push it through in the middle there like that. And then if you have an older tape measure like I do, I actually wrap it in clear tape in this spot. That way I don't even end up tucking the hole bigger than it needs to be. So 
I took the push pin out. So I'm just going to lay a piece of clear tape on it. And then I'm just going to wrap the tape around. And this is packing tape. And then put my push pin right back in. And that clear tape just gives a reinforcement so it doesn't end up ripping as you're keeping the, the line taut. And I already had that at my one spot too. And I'm going to go ahead and poke a hole through where the one is. And this is going to be for my pencil lead to be able to poke through. So the lead will poke through just like that. Let's get started. So the outer circle needs to be 54 inch diameter to be able to give it that extra lift that I need. So I'm going to find the 54 inch and then again go up one inch because I took off an inch from the front side and find my central spot and then push the push pin carefully without getting your finger. So now I'm going to do the arc. Put my push pin in and then we draw. Make sure you pull it tight. Make sure as you're doing this that you are keeping tension as you're drawing the arch. Arch, arc, yeah, both work. And then I'm going to move down to the 25 inch spot, which I've reinforced with tape, and draw my inner diameter, which will make that 48 inch. And if you can see it all that I have a little bit of a boo-boo on here, ignore that. Like I said, I'm winging this. Now the key to know where to move the push pin again is you go back to your 28 inch mark on mine. Remember I added that extra inch. And you go to the very edge of the, the board and you see where you can line it up to where everything kind of overlaps. If you notice here, I'm not going all the way down because this part's going to be wasted anyways. So to figure out where to put this block, I am just going to kind of see where things swivel around and where they overlap. There we go. So I think that's about a good spot. So here we go around again. doing the same thing. Oh, see, it's lit out. This part is easier if you keep your arm holding it. And then I move it back down to that tw 25 inch mark. And don't get frustrated if your pencil lead breaks, it's going to. So I'm going to keep doing these arches all the way down. I'm going to do 12 of them because I'm going to need three to be able to overlap and make each side. And then I have to double it. I use a box cutter to cut out all 12 pieces. And now I'm going to fit these together like a puzzle piece and cut and trim and make them into perfect circles. I'm going to make four circles and then we're going to move on to the next section. So now what I'm going to do is match this edge with this edge and the back side with the back side, getting them to line up and making sure all the points are covered. And everything follows the same curve. That's the important part, so that you get the same curve going on. 
And once you know that same inside diameter is matching up, you're good, just going to cut straight through it all. That way when you put things together, it matches up perfectly. Then I'm going to put a piece of tape on the front and the back just to keep things in place. Then with a third piece, I'm going to do the same thing. Then for the last circle, I am going to measure across 48 inches and do a temporary piece of tape just so I can double check. So I'm measuring across 48 inches just to make sure that I'm getting it close. And now that I know that this is about 48 inches straight across, I'm going to go ahead and do my cutting and then I'm going to use this as my guide for the other pieces. One ring is done. Now I just have to do three more that match up perfectly to this one. Okay, just to kind of give you an idea, I went ahead and marked everything out. I'll walk through it in just a second. I had to do this just so I could think through the process myself and then kind of show you the measurements. So these are inches. I made a panel that's 15 inches going up. This is 11 by 18, another 11 by 18 then another 15 by 33. These longer panels right here are 60 inches or thereabouts. And then full width of the 48 inches, 18 inches and another 18 inches. So now that I have all that marked out, I'm going to go ahead and cut on all these solid lines. I cut all the big panels now to fine tune them. So for the 15 inch wide panels that are around 60 inches or so, I marked an inch and a half down from each long side. Now what I'm doing is just going about the width of a ruler and I'm going through and marking lines in that one and a half inch section, the top and the bottom. You're going to do this all the way down all three of the 15 inch pieces, the one that, that includes both 60 inch pieces and that 33 inch piece. Now that all the lines are on, we're going to go ahead and cut on all those lines. And while using that ruler on the other line, I'm going to use it as my spot to bend on. Just so it doesn't bend to the wrong places, I push down and I lift up. And you put these tabs in basically for all these lines that you've now cut. So I have one of the circles and I'm going to go along the inner edge and take that double stick tape, remember the carpet tape I talked about, and run it all along the inside. I did remove all tape of that green painter's tape that I had put on here from the side. It does have a backing on one side. I am going to leave that on. And just every so often kind of give a little bend. I'm not pushing it down hard. I'm going to leave the ripples in it. That part will smooth out once I start attaching the next part. Now I have these big pieces that we already cut up. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a fold. What I'm going to do is peel off little pieces at a time and stick this up into the edge and stick them down. And I'm going to give it the same curvature as the ring. I'm gonna stick it right up along the edge and stick it down. I'm just going to keep going all the way around. Now that I have the first circle on, I'm going to flip this over and do the same thing to the other side. So I have this section that overlaps. I'm going to go ahead and just cut that part off. Okie dokie. 
don't worry about the seams for right now. Now that I got that part done, I'm gonna take the two other rings that I have and I'm going to cover them one at a time in double stick tape and set them on top. And this time, instead of just running it on the inside, I'm gonna run it on the inside and the outside. So I'm gonna do, the middle kinda of, kinda of overlap. I'm going to do this all the way around. No white showing. Okay, so before you put the outer band on, make sure you peel off the backing. If not, you're just gonna be sticking to the backing accidentally instead of where you want it. So now I need to go over the rest of the white. Now we're gonna put the sticky side face down right on here. That way it covers up what we already did. See how I'm using where it's pieced together? That way I don't accidentally set all of it down at once and I can line everything up before it really makes contact. And when I line it up, I'm lining up the outside edge with everything. To make it easier to press together, I am turning it upside down and pressing down. And now to cover this side. So all the edges are put on. I'm going to go ahead and just sand down any of the sharpness. So kind of like sand at an angle, just to kind of dull it out that way no kitties get little cuts from it. All sanded, all the sharp edges are off on the inside lip and the outside. And now where I have all this green tape, I'm taking it off and I'm going to run just a couple bands of the clear packing tape. There we go, three pieces. I'm gonna do that on the other two seams too. So you can kind of see that there's a little bit of a seam that shows. I'm going to fill this in and along the inside seam right here where everything meets together, I'm going to use my low temp glue gun to go ahead and fill in those spots just to kind of smooth things out a little bit more. A hot glue doesn't stick the best, but because it's going down in the crack, I think it's going to do okay. Just remember, hot glue guns can melt plastic. Guess what? I messed up. I apparently, in between going from day one to day two, I forgot to record part of it for you. Not sure how I did it, but it happened. So here's a summary of what I did. On those two long pieces, the two that were the full width of the board, but like 18 inches wide, so what I did was I started four inches from one of the long sides. And remember those slivers that you cut out in between all the different pieces for the edge? I took one of those, folded it in half to make sure that it matched up perfectly, opened it back up, and then centered it and used it to trace from that four inch up spot to make my arc. And I did that on both pieces. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and show you day two. All right, so I took a little break. We're on day two, had to do mommy stuff. I had the 18 by 11 and that piece we just cut the curve into. And I'm going to start with keeping this in between. Basically, we're making a box for it to sit on. So I ran the tape down one side. Now I'm gonna match up the pieces and tape it together. And then that helps me make my corner. To help give it some stability, I am going to run just a little bit of that low tint glue right in the corner. Once everything is put together. Together. So I already ran tape on this last piece and I am just going to fold it back and then meet up the edges and then put the tape on it. And remember that piece that we cut out right here? We are going to use it as the base to give some stability. We're just going to kind of cookie cutter it together. I'm going to take that second one, use the first as a template, give 
give it a quick cut and then cut off an end and I know because the whole piece is 48 inches wide I need two pieces now that are 24 inches and now I have the perfect fit to fit in the bottom and I'm going to take this into place too and there you go the bottom fit and now on the inside through the edge and on those outside corners on those seams I'm going to go ahead and run that low temp glue just to kind of help everything be a little bit more stable okay it's all glued now I found some scrap wood that I have laying around and I'm basically going to be cutting this one oh we'll say right there putting a brace that goes all the way across and then another leg that comes down with the wheels on each end so it can sit inside here I'm doing two pieces that are ten and seven eighths four pieces that are six and a half inches tall. Those are going to be the legs of it. And then for braces at, in between the legs, I have nine and seven eighths, another piece of scrap wood. I'm gonna do two pieces out of this. So let me get them cut and put together so you can really see what I'm talking about. So you can see how it's going to sit. I just have to attach the wheels now. I'm gonna use screws to attach them. Okay, so I think I had the wheels in the right place. I am just taping them in place just so I can set the big wheel on top and make sure that everything is in the right spot before I permanently glue them down into place. And I'm using the center pin as kind of like my eyeball spot of the curve where I'm lining it up. That way I know it, everything's in the right place making it even with that pin. Okay, okay. so I'll just slide this and hopefully I don't take out a light above me. I'm trying to. There we go. Do -do. Do -do -do. I suggest doing this in a place that has enough clearance. is my light above. That's why it's not rolling. It's usually because it's hitting the light. And if you hear lovely Mother Nature, she is giving us nice rumbling today. It is non-stop here. I think this is going to work. I am going to go ahead and use my low temp glue gun and glue those wheels into place as I take out my light again. I'm just putting a ton of glue in between the wall and the wood as my starting point. Now we let that cool and then I'm going to glue all the way down the sides and I'll cross the bottom. Okay, all the glue's on. Time to put the wheel completely together. I'm done. Yes, yes, there's a lot of thunder. And yes, if you want some more traction, you can cut in half the rugs from the Dollar Tree. Again, they're a dollar. But I want to see how it works where I can easily clean it. I want to see if cats can walk on it. I might end up adding rugs onto it. We'll see. But let's go see if it works as is. Okay, so I cut off the corners and rounded them off. That way this part doesn't really touch. That way there's not a sharp edge. And I took the wheels out. And now I have some scrap fleece and felt 
that I'm going to just line this edge with and see if that will help with giving a smooth surface and maybe give it some more stability. So I wasn't very happy with the instability. It wobbled back and forth. And yes, a lot of the big cat wheels, they wobble back and forth, but this was wobbling a little bit too much for my liking. Even though it wasn't coming off track, I just didn't like it. So I wanted the wheels be a little bit farther set back. If you kind of look here, um, the edge of where this black is, is where I lined up the edge here for a visual eyeballing. And then I put wheels on the bottom the same way, and then my other wheels. So you can kind of see how much I moved it when I unglued everything. And by adding this, it just gave a little bit of less friction, a little bit more smoothness. I did try it without the wheels, and it just, unless you have a heavier cat, it wasn't going to work. It moves a whole lot smoother with the six wheels. for the entire time. So I couldn't get a great video of the cats using it because all I have right now that will get on there is kittens, but you get the idea. It is working really well. I did end up using the command strips that are like Velcro that I can be able to take the carpet off of to be able to clean it. That way I can still use it at rescue groups and be able to sanitize everything. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of how well this wheel works. In the future, make sure to look for some shorts. As the kittens get older, I will make sure that they use the wheel and I'll put videos up for you. <laughs> 